Now, much like the disturbing film iceberg, there's a whole lot of these images all over. And I went to Reddit a long time ago and found one that I liked. And I can't find it again, so I don't know who made it. Because everyone seems to make their own. And I don't feel like making my own disturbing books iceberg because I find it's weird that these iceberg images sort of help dictate what people ought to watch or uh, they're not positioned like this is my personal iceberg. They're usually put out there more so with the film iceberg as this is the list that you must watch and you may as well ignore the first three tiers because that's for wusses and then the middle and the bottom are for the hardcore and the very bottom sometimes contains things that are unobtainable. I'd heard conversation about this on uh, the page to screen podcast with Stuart Bannerman and it reminded me of the time that a very prolific horror author shared on Twitter or X a uh, horror movie iceberg that contained a lot of these films that you can't get unless you are an FBI agent or uh, peruse the dark web and look for things that ought not be seen. So like that is not a horror iceberg. So when I found a lot of these horror literature icebergs, I was really intrigued because we didn't seem to delve into the dark, deep depths of horror literature the way we ought to, or the way we could, the way that these horror movie icebergs have been taken and subverted by some users to include snuff films, like real snuff films or films that are entered into evidence into ongoing or past FBI investigations uh, on very horrible, monstrous killers. So we don't tend to do that. We don't have like the Dahmer files. I have a binder that belongs to my husband that is FBI file, the release documents on Jeffrey Dahmer. That's a horror book that would be I guess in that bottom tier, the base of the iceberg. Now we all know how an ice Berg works. The uh, tip is usually what you see, what protrudes above the murky depths that everyone can see. And that's typical horror movies and in this case horror books. And then as you go down deeper, the iceberg gets bigger, weirder, wilder, and darker. The darker is really the key thing here. So I found quite a few of these. They're all very different. There seems to be even more horror literature icebergs, which is interesting because there's way less videos on horror book icebergs. And I've seen a few that contain like hundreds of books. And what's the point of that really? Just to list every disturbing book and to really try and like put them into different levels of horror. Now I do have a video on my channel here that is like a primer. It's a workshop that I gave for a, at a library for a writer's group about the different degrees of horror. And that sort of breaks down where you begin with a very light horror and where you end with extreme and splatterpunk in a very basic way. And in that I note titles that are widely read available and classics of each specific subgenre and degree of darkness within it. So I was really drawn to this. So when I found this particular one, it listed a lot of books I was very familiar with and I can't argue too much with their placement on the iceberg. So if you're going to be looking for a horror fiction iceberg, I think this might be a good start. A lot of the booktubers I talk to all of the time seem to talk about darker fare. We all read a lot of darker extreme fiction from time to time, sometimes exclusively. And you have channels like Plagued by Visions with Juan Valencia, who has extreme horror and disturbing books as like a staple for better or worse on his channel, mostly for the better, because yeah, I like extreme fiction, don't we all? It seems to me that on BookTok and BookTube and Instagram even, the disturbing books seem to get a lot of attention for whatever reason, a lot of the time from people who don't typically read extreme or dark fiction or delve into it for some sort of novelty sake. So that's not what this is here, although I do have some selections and suggestions for the later portion of the show. So am I talking about a horror fiction iceberg today isn't really a, a pissing contest or a dick swinging contest or a hen peck. However, you'd like to position this like it's not necessarily ranking books that are more important or extreme than others. And it is really subjective. Okay. Uh, like all of these are, and that's why there's so many that exist. 
And it's like, again, weird to me that so many horror fiction icebergs exist, but no one really talks about them. There's a couple videos online where people talk about these horror fiction icebergs. They're usually very long videos. It seem to be kind of clickbaity and it's people talking in kind of monotone. It's faceless channels for the most part. And they play video games along in behind. So it seems to be a bit of a cash grab. I'm not really sure what the angle is there, uh, but they're useless. They're not really useless. So here I'd like to talk a little bit about these books. And the iceberg that I've chosen is pretty basic. Like I said, we don't go into the deep, deep, super dark extreme. There are some very dark books on this list, of course, but not into like illegal things and things you can't find, which I will mention a bit at the end. But we start out nice and easy. We have The Shining, Salem's Lot, The Amityville Horror, The Turn of the Screw, Animal Farm, Dracula, Coraline, Frankenstein, The Haunting of Hill House, and The Diary of a Young Girl, which is The Diary of Anne Frank, if you knew it by that title in high school. So yes, very basic, some not even horror, dark books, nonfiction makes an entry in this list. And that's why I gravitated toward this one. And we've got this nice little um, picture, a little illustration that millennials seem to love these sort of line drawings. I'm not really sure why of a guy that looks fairly content and full of self-assured confidence. He's pretty okay with this list of books and you should be. Some of them are upsetting and some of them are horror. There are people that don't like to read these sorts of things. Amityville horror might be a bit much for some people. Uh, Coraline might be a little dark if you're young. Uh, Frankenstein may be boring, <laughs> a little too literary, but yeah, The Shining is too scary for some people. Uh, yeah, this level is basic horror. If you have never read a horror book, something from this level really works. I've read all of these books, which is pretty cool. I like that. And that's part of what I like about this list is there are some new titles for me that I'll have to look up. So yeah, but this first level, we got it pretty, pretty clinched under control, calm, cool, collected, basic horror. Then we get into the next level where our dude on the side, our little illustration is kind of like, well, still feeling pretty okay. Even though it has Lolita on it, which may really disturb a lot of people. A head full of ghosts. Cool. A kite runner. Now we've got some dark things, much like the diary of Anne Frank going on in here. Heart of darkness. I am legend 1984 night, which I'll have to look up the Lord of the flies, the exorcist pet cemetery, and Dante's Inferno and the Lottery. So Shirley Jackson has featured in both of these levels. And I like that. I've read these except this book, Night, which I'll have to look up. I just let my fingers do the walk-in. Night is a 1960 Holocaust memoir. So much like the Diary of Anne Frank or the Diary of a Young Girl. So yes, dark stuff. Still not poison to your brain. Still stuff that is acceptable in schools. Still stuff that is talked about uh, in cafes around the world and have been for many years in a lot of cases. Books that have been major motion pictures, of course. Same with the other level too. So we've got like The Exorcist and Pet Cemetery, some very basic horror staples, which you may even lump into that first group. So still looking pretty confident, looking pretty cool. I've read all of these except Night and The Kite Runner. and. Night sounds more interesting to me, so I'm not sure if I'm going to hunt down these books, but yeah, still pretty basic books. Lots of people have read. If you've read The Kite Runner or Night, let me know what they're like. Then we get into Darker. Our little illustrated gentleman has a straight mouth, kind of like, hmm, I don't know. Hmm. Yes. We have a few darker books like Johnny Got His Gun, which I haven't read, but I've seen the film and it is featured in that Metallica video as well. The Metallica song One is based on this film. Uh, the book, perhaps? James Hetfield's a pretty big reader. The Cement Garden, something I've not read. In the Tall Grass, In Cold Blood, The Road, Battle Royale, Invisible Monsters, Lunar Park, House of Leaves, As I Lay Dying, and Train Spotting. Now, these are all very different books, <laughs> very different books. We have very different decades that a lot of these books were written in. But I think the one theme here is just the desolation, the nihilism, the darkness, the true darkness laying in the heart of man, 
the long lonesome night of the soul kind of stuff the reckoning of being human and the darkness and evil that surrounds us in this world whether it be within us or around us that we can't control so yeah dark evil war desolation madness sadness we're still okay though we're still okay it's not so bad i mean it is horror after all a lot of these books aren't technically horror a lot of people wouldn't say that these are horror books especially when you start including things like train spotting and lunar park uh, or haunted like they're not really horror they're uh dark transgressive maybe just tragedies they're basically tragedies more modern tragedies they're dark urban realism I i'm not really sure where they fit outside of just transgressive literature so yeah that's sort of what we're doing they don't really lump in with those first two categories which were pretty horror and fairly tame these are pretty dark so you're going to have themes of war again which seems to be a theme through this there's always like a one or two war picks but they are like very dark sociopolitical sociologically dark now we start getting into some fun our little dude i'm not really sure what's going on he looks pretty distraught he's got like a goatee i think he's grown a gro goatee i'm not really sure why that um, maybe he's spent too long in the deep dark underground which i can't really relate to i think that the next picture and the picture above should just be the same just straight mouth kind of like hmm because these books are pretty similar coin locker babies my eyes are black holes perfume story of a murder the troop Requiem for a Dream, Blubber, Island, The Laws of the Skies, and Tender is the Flesh. Now we're just taking that same theme from the level above. It's deep darkies and we're just going deeper and darker still. Very similar books, nothing much different. But if you didn't like that level above, you're not going to like this layer at all. Uh, we're getting frozen solid here, folks. This is darker stuff i have not read coin locker babies heard a lot about it but if you've read it let me know what it's like and if you would recommend my eyes are black holes i have heard of not read perfume story of a murder is a classic a uh, friend of mine patrick suskin's book was what he picked up at the airport of all things read it on a flight enjoyed it so much but then handed it to me thinking you would love this book and i did i love the film too and we have the troop which gets a lot of talk. Some people can't dig it. They feel like, oh, it's just trying to be Stephen King. I enjoyed the troupe a lot, I uh, like a lot. So yeah, I highly recommend the troupe. I don't find that it's this deep and dark to go along with these other books. Requiem for a Dream, very dark reckoning, great writing too. That's another thing that all these books have in common here. Blubber, I've not read, I don't think it's the Judy Bloom book. <laughs> But then it could be because Blubber's banned for having a lack of moral tone. I just looked up Laws of the Skies and I'm very interested in the Laws of the Skies. If you read it, let me know. It sounds like Lord of the Flies meets the troop. And I'm very interested in checking that out. Never heard of it before, but if it's in this level, I think I'll enjoy it because I've enjoyed every book that I've read in this level and above so far. So in a lot of these sorts of iceberg things you're starting to get into this darker stuff that it starts to stop being commercially available or readily available things these movies weren't in theaters sometimes uh you start to get into books that are usually from smaller presses a lot of them aren't available at the libraries when you're getting into these darker things and some of them are just super popular regardless of that and have had a whole other life breathed into them like the cipher regina from regina's haunted library just talked about the cipher in the most recent issue of bookworms where i also review a bunch of books so if you like all this book talk stuff definitely check out bookworms it's a zine available only in print and limited editions but yeah i have a, a look at the year to come in horror and suggest a lot of really cool books and of course there's great fiction jg faraday has a new story in there there's other really great stories there's a stalker story i really loved and some poetry and regina's look at the cipher so the cipher is on this 
level where our dude's looking pretty bad. He's got long hair. He's got the sort of chin strap beard. I don't know what the beard is supposed to mean, but I mean, I think just an unhappy face would work here. Just an unhappy face. Last exit to Brooklyn. Uh, the Conspiracy Against the Human Race, Blindness, which I'll have to look up, In the Miso Soup, Child of God, Outer Dark, and American Psycho, everybody's favorite, uh, Haunted, and The North Water. Now, The North Water, Blindness, and Outer Dark are books I've not heard of before. Out of all of them, The North Water sounds very interesting to me. I've just looked it up, and it is um, a novel about the whale killing business, and it looks very, very dark. So I'm very interested in that actually. And it's not um, like written a hundred years ago. So I think that that's more appealing to me as well. So I'd like to check that out, but I don't feel again that this layer is much different than the two above it. So like these three are just the deep darkies. These are the darkness of human nature, the human condition, if you will, uh, the darkness of being a human animal on planet Earth and the psychological darkness of things that people can do to themselves and one another. So it's not like, I don't know, horror. It seems to be not a lot of typical horror fare, like those first two levels where we recognized all those authors and we have those books all on our shelves. I have quite a lot of these and I've read almost all of them, but the, these three levels are just kind of I don't know, not always horror. They're dark, they're scary, they're horrific, but horror as a genre, I'm not really sure if they fit in there. Really celebrated, wonderful, dark books though. If you like all of the books that we've talked about so far, all these levels, if this is the level of the iceberg where you'd like to see the iceberg end, this is where the bottom of the sea is for you. You might enjoy In a Lonely Place by Carl Edward Wagner if you haven't read it already. It is a classic 1980s horror short stories by a master who left us way too soon. This is a reprint, came out by Valancourt Books. I'm enjoying the heck out of revisiting these stories and just mm, dark, wonderful, great writing. And it sort of encompasses all these levels in a way. So yeah, if you like that, if you want to read the precursor to the Blair Witch in the story Sticks, pick this up. I have a little selection of books here as well. And one book that hasn't been on here is A Clockwork Orange that I think would fit in the last three levels that we've talked about. Now, these last two levels are dark. Okay, you've seen glimpses of them here, but we'll talk about the second last level. The second last level, isn't that like the punt ultimate? It's like you want to be the middle piece in the human centipede. The second last level. Eesh. Let's go play at the Adams. Dark, very dark. Uh, Happy Ever After. Not heard of it. The Summer I Died, The Girl Next Door, 120 Days of Sodom, Off Season, and The Marbled Swarm. I had The Marbled Swarm. I just love saying The Marbled Swarm. I think pause a second and say it. Isn't that a wonderful word? The marbled swarm. It's like cellar door. It's better than cellar door, I think, because it's got that extra roll in it in marbled. The marbled swarm is on my list because I've enjoyed other Dennis Cooper and I'm on a hunt for a particular book. I don't think it's the marbled swarm, but I might as well read as much Dennis Cooper as I can because I enjoy it. You may not enjoy Dennis Cooper. If you've read any Dennis Cooper and didn't like it, you may not like a lot of what's on this list. Uh, let's go play The Adams Extremely Dark. If you didn't like The Girl Next Door, which it appears here alongside, then yeah, very dark. And you're dealing with not only the dark things people do to one another, the other levels dealt with that in a way that is sort of the consequence of being human on earth and trying to get along in our uh, social paradigms and, and being, war and murder being a consequence of a lot of that. This is beyond that. This is where murder turns into playtime. And it's extremely horrific stuff, especially when a lot of it's based on true things. Now, the one book that caught my eye here is The Summer I Died. And if it's the one I'm thinking of, where it's uh, two boys are out in the woods shooting at cans and hear a woman screaming and run to help. Very interested in that premise, just as it basically starts with that one line pitch. Um, that's enough to entice me, especially if it takes place in like the 80s, which I'm suspecting it does. I'm going to take a look. But other than that, yeah, I've read these books and they are all horrifically dark. And it really is that when 
darkness and murder and death and hatred and evil become fun to these villainous perpetrators. And it's a study on that a lot of the times from their point of view, which makes it even more disturbing because you're being put in the shoes of that person unwittingly, perhaps if you've just picked this up off of a rack at a used bookstore without knowing what you were getting into. It may be a little, little dark, but if you're like me and a lot of people are, <laughs> These are really cool books. They're all really masterfully written. They're all, you know, teaching us something about the darkness that we would never really dip into as adjusted human beings. Uh, this is very much a study on the maladjustment and it is horrifying and really interesting to read. Some books that I could put on these levels is Edward Lee's City Infernal. A lot of Edward Lee fits here. Uh, the Bedwetter. Now I sat next to Lee Allen Howard at the HWA meal and just what a, what a cool guy. Funny, sweet. Yeah. You wouldn't picture this really fantastic book, really dark, really warped book about bedwetting and the piss fairy to come out of such a sweet gentleman. But hey, you know what? It's fun and it's dark and it's not on this list. Probably because it is, like I said, small press. A lot of these maybe didn't get as much fanfare or uh, availability because a lot of them are from smaller presses or may have been banned <laughs> from time to time in one way or another, uh, except for, of course, like the Jack Ketchum stuff. Everyone's very familiar with that, but yeah. Uh, Edward Lee could make a, an appearance on these last two levels for sure and the next one. So on the last one, because I am not 25, I don't understand why there's a picture of a beluga whale here. He looks so happy. He looks pretty stoked. He's down in the watery depths. He's not on the bottom of the ocean. I don't know. Belugas don't really hang out that low. I think they're kind of warmer water lovers. That's why they keep getting stuck in rivers. But yeah, belugas, happy little belugas swimming wild, swim so free. That's me here with Survivor until one of us is dead, which I've not read. Gone to see the river man, which is on my list. And I keep looking for it and I keep wanting it. And I, I I'm on a book buying ban right now and I haven't bought it, but I'm going to high life, exquisite corpse, prodigal blues or prodigal. I'm not sure how to pronounce that word ever and cows. Okay. We could go way darker here. We could add, I don't know about this 19 little stab wounds. I just have it here cause I love the cover, but the big head by Edward Lee, extremely dark rape centric, dark sex fantasy and torture and mayhem across the countryside by a deformed monster. It is terrifying. It is extremely dark. It is extremely gory. It's extreme. Dead Inside by Chandler Morrison. A lot of people talk about this book and I really enjoyed it. It's masterfully written, extremely dark. And the subject matter here is darker than Survivor, probably on par with Gone to See the River Man. Uh, maybe a little darker and a little more fantastical. Gone to see the river man, maybe as far as I, from what I understand of it, because I've not read it, could happen. Exquisite corpse could happen and has, because it's based on two different serial killers. So like, you know, you want to stay within some realism here for some reason. Uh, cows, fantasy. <laughs> cows is mental. Cows had me laugh out loud as soon as there's a cow talking through a grate in the floor. But again, it's very, um, abuse centric where we go from this sort of um, maniacal playtime in terror and horror in the last level or two. This is like fantastical off the wall, totally nuts, extreme beyond extreme. If you've seen the film, the sadness, that's what this level is with a happy little beluga heralding it. I mean, I could look at my entire collection here and pull down 45 other books within a minute, but Hey, I'm going to leave that to you. If you've read something like survivor, I don't know. It really belongs two levels up to me. I don't know if I'm confusing it with a different book, gone to see the river man, Christopher Triana, and a lot of his other works and a lot of his contemporaries, as far as extreme horror authors go. Exquisite corpse by Poppy Z bright, which I talked about just recently. A lot of us have read that and love it. I've got Charlie Jacobs, this symbiotic fascination, which kind of goes hand in hand with that sort of story. And that's another uh, extreme that may belong on this or the level above it for the deep, dark darkies. You know, you've got things like written by serial killers, the uh, recently up for parole, Robert Picton here in Canada, 
wrote a book that's not available. You've also got The Final Truth, I believe, by Pee Wee Gaskins that is not available or very, very hard and expensive to find. Uh, dark Stories and Manifestos. I mean, you could include in here that Dahmer Files case file. It is pretty horrific and belongs here. You could include some of the manifestos from other people, not so much the Unabomber because that was pretty interesting and not on a horror scale necessarily, but the manifesto penned by Elliot Roger, which is extremely dark and in some places really well written, but you know, that might belong here. There are other like things written by horror killers, the letters of Albert Fish perhaps would belong in this section if it was the way that the horror film ones have been subverted. And I really think that other people have taken what was a fairly gentle list of horror films that went from light to dark and added in these extremely dark things. But you could, I can see how people would mistake uh, extreme horror fiction like that, that uh, decorates my shelf and the shelves of a lot of similar channels and people watching. I can see how that would be confused with some very deep, deep, dark, very illegal writings that exist. Things that are banned here in Canada. I get a list, it's a quarterly list published by our Canadian Border Services and they let you know what books and DVDs and stuff are banned here in Canada and none of the books I read are on that list so I'm feeling pretty good about that. One of the books on this list here that I haven't read is called Until One of Us Is Dead. I just really like the title so I might sleuth that one out. So the books I haven't really read in this list that I'd like to pick up, this book called Night may be of interest to me, although very dark nonfiction. Uh, I want to check out, I want to check out The North Water, which is one that was very interesting to me. Um, maybe I'm going to look up what this ha Happy Ever After is because uh, quite a few things called Happy Ever After are out and none of them seem to really fit when I was like, checking it out and I'm gonna of course pick up the marbled swarm and until one of us is dead so yeah that's the list that's one of the best lists I've found that isn't an overwhelming 700 books or whatever and it doesn't seem to have you know no real differentiation between the levels although I am combining levels a couple times through this there is a discernible progression from light to dark horror uh, would you agree? Have you seen a lot of these lists? Have you watched videos? Can you point me to a good video like this one about icebergs of horror books? If you're interested in more like this, of course, I do have that workshop here and a PDF of the workshop and it goes through some of the different degrees of horror fiction and it's more targeted for writers, but very interesting to readers as well as are these icebergs and that's why they seem to persist. I do love looking at these lists of movies that people consider dark and not really from an edgelord perspective of, oh, ho, ho, you have not seen dark, my child. I have watched the dark, but yeah, I've also read the dark, but I don't look at them like that. I'm looking for new titles. If you're like me and you're looking for new titles, definitely check out this iceberg. Thank you so much for watching and have an ooky spooky day.